Hi everyone, this is Cherry Enchantress with Pixie Dust Tarot, and this is your Daily Dust for Saturday, June 17th, if you're watching in real time, but it can also be for whenever you stumble upon it. It's also a timeless reading. This month I am using inclusive decks for Pride Month and for Juneteenth to get a good representation of a variety of people in these decks. I initially was drawn to realism and art that was realistic looking art or photo realism prefer the the drawings better than than the photography type of realism but this is one of those oracles that really really amazingly inclusive and it was a very early early done oracle by Colette Baron Reed who's one of you know the most famous oracle designers and authors and <clears throat> so even though I like I prefer to use tarot every day because tarot is is what I am a tarot reader <laughs> I sometimes dip into the oracles too for nice big messages and sometimes I can treat it kind of like a, uh, a tarot message as well but let's see what the wisdom of the hidden realms has for us and that's Colette herself <laughs> so, dramatic a dramatic depiction of her. This deck is just so nice. It's it's gold edged. I don't know if I use this in my silver and gold series. Might have I might have forgotten. And I think I just don't use it that much because it it's got these borders, you know, and words. And I prefer images to fill the page or the, you know the the card. But there are a lot of um, you know, there's Native Americans and there's Asian and there's, uh, yeah, it's a lot. It's a it's a good variety of of images. So there's something for everyone. I especially think this one queen is pretty. Mm. Not that that matters to me. It's it's not so much the people in the card, but it's you know, the message that it brings, but it is really nice when you get to see somebody that looks like you, <laughs> it just makes you feel included, right? All right, let's give it a good shuffle. Now, to be honest, Colette Baron Reed, the other oracle she has aren't quite as inclusive as, as this one, but they're more, well, she's got animals, yeah, and other types of, and then she's got crystals. She does have a goddess deck that I don't have. That's a good one to do. Oh, ooh, I should do, I should do a goddess tomorrow. Okay. Here we go. Let's, I was about to shuffle. Let's take from the middle, and we have, oh, there she is, the altar priestess, Colette herself. Preparation, prayer, sacred ritual. The resting tree, patience and stillness. And sisters of the seasons. Cycles of Growth, Natural Law, Divine Order. All right, let's zoom in and see what we get. This is very feminine, and there's there's a, a strong majority of masculine cards in this deck, so definitely calling to the feminine here. So today, or whenever you stumble upon it, or you can use this as for a future day or event, or a clue or a sign to it because I last night in my in my live I felt like there is a strong energy about to approach us for the summer solstice and uh, a ritual ritual energy happening like the the days before like the day right before or or a couple of days before is like this portal and those are the strongest days for creating and manifesting and setting your intentions but tomorrow or <laughs> today I, I filmed this a day ahead of time so to me it's tomorrow but today as you read this or you watch this 
you may be called to do some ritual work or set some intention. And part of that is preparing an altar. It's not always necessary, but in, in some cases it's, it's helpful to set your altar. So in this deck, The Wisdom of the Hidden Realms, Colette has a way of describing it the energy as an allied energy, something that's helpful, and also a way of describing it as a challenge. So the ally energy is setting the stage, taking your place in this in sacred meditation and prayer. The, the altar priestess is like the high priestess, and it talks about the ritual of interaction with the mundane world, kind of like the magician, using the tools at hand to to create magic. You're being required to see everything as sacred, all of life as a meditation, and every action as a prayer of devotion. You can, if you are a very busy person, and you don't want to just sit and meditate, there's all kinds of ways you can meditate. You can meditate while you take your walk, and what it means to meditate at a walking meditation just is just simply being. A little bit more aware than you usually are when you're walking. When you're walking, you're just stepping and you're thinking, "I gotta go and burn calories or whatever." But the walking meditation is is a little bit different. It's like being listening to the birds and smelling the air and feeling the breeze on your face, and and the steps feel different, as if your every every pressure point that your foot makes to the ground is is kind of symbolic you know is is kind of a propels you to something new the sky is wider and bigger and broader the sun the warm sun represents clarity and life and health so you just really get deep into your surroundings when you do a, a walking kind of meditation so you can use you can meditate in in lots of different forms when you're able to perceive the world this way, your question will lead you to an appropriate answer. I did that. I've done that before. We, yes, I actually kind of had a question and it helped so much. If all is sacred, how can anything be wrong? <laughs> Ask how you can shift your consciousness to see your circumstances through the eyes of the divine and you realize how perfect and sacred everything is right now. So the challenge is, is not to put yourself down in any way, um, not to let anyone dishonor you. Stand up for your beliefs. Um, don't keep the, on the, the path of, of, of seeing things as wrong and bad and you're bad and you can't make change and you're not good enough because that is just going to keep feeding you need to learn how you need to figure out how to get out of that but i think if you shift your consciousness and your awareness to your surroundings then you it will help you get out of this <clears throat> negative energy if you have it but you might not have the negative energy um Never sell yourself short when it comes to your intuition as well. You are always led to the highest ground when you follow your inner guidance. And that's important. You, even more than I, know exactly what's right for you. So definitely listen to these readings for inspiration and, and guidance and help. But ultimately, you are, the, you are your own priestess here. You're your own guide. So... Ch tap into your higher self because your higher self actually knows what's best for you. <clears throat> so there is a kind of a responsibility when you're an altar priestess. So if you do sometimes similar work like this, like tarot reading or something, then there is there is an actual courage that you have to implement and authenticity and being you know being true to yourself. And being honorable to others, you know, practice with honor and without malice and with with the with harm to none, you know, the the threefold law, you know, don't do not harm others and 
make sure that you always set positive intentions when you're working with others in, in this kind of field as well. But you can do it, and Spirit is watching you and very uh, proud of you. <clears throat> of course, and, and there's a variety of people out there. There's some that are extremely experienced, and they got this, you know, and there's other people that are still learning, and that's fine, you know, take your time. Maybe you need a little more patience and stillness in your life. <laughs> um, so the resting tree is a sign for you to stop focusing and planning and be at peace in the moment. It's still about the moments, and that's definitely how what's going to guide you to, to this higher energy, to the divine, and it will guide you to your manifestation of what you desire. Slow down, sit back, watch the roses bloom and the birds feed in the meadow. It's it's not about physically forging ahead and doing something aggressive to get to your goals to at least today. Some days you have it and being active is very important, but today it's more about being aware and in tune. And, and that may sometimes be frustrating because maybe you're the type that doesn't feel like things are done unless you're doing something. <laughs> but, you know, there's more doing in being and being still sometimes than we give it credit for. Just that presence and being in the moment and, and, and attracting with our strength of mind is sometimes better than all the physical activity that we do to, to attract things. Um, because in the end, it is our minds that decide what the changes are, you know. You can you can go, like say for instance, you want to um, build some muscle and you go to the gym and you lift weights. That's definitely should do that if you want to build muscle, but um, in your mind, you're associating that activity with making a big or muscle and it's ultimately still your mind that's actually growing the muscle <laughs> so like maybe tap into that energy like what is it's it is the physical activity in part but so much of it is the mental belief that it works right so tap into that energy of the mental belief because that's way more powerful than you give it credit for so this is just signaling that you can now rest or you can focus in, in a meditative way. This is just more meditation energy here, really. It's like setting the scene, setting your altar, setting your environment, and, and you know, appreciating the world around you. And I feel the Sisters of the Seasons is, is more of the same. It's, it's whatever season you're in, because I know that here we have summer, but down in the Southern Hemisphere, it's or we're about to have summer and 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 the southern hemisphere is about to have winter that in any season you can appreciate your surroundings and the beauty of the season especially when we go through this change this shift you know from from one to the other season the sisters of the seasons meet you on your path and they remind you that everything has a natural rhythm that obeys a higher law just as the seasons magically pass be reminded that nature of birth, growth, harvest, and decay cannot be altered. So if you keep on your path with determination and discernment, allowing for the natural course of events to unfold, success is assured. And guess what? You don't have to walk to change seasons, right? <laughs> seasons change around you. And that's an interesting concept too. Like change just happens. And if seasons can change so dramatically without you actually doing anything, just being, just being alive, the seasons change. Just imagine the other changes that you can create through intention, through manifestation, through more of your spiritual higher mind work. I, I, it's not exactly mental because sometimes we get into our mind and the mind is taps into the ego a lot and that's in the ego is where where you where the little voice poo poos things you know says this isn't gonna work are you nuts you know so be aware of that when you go into your mind for things 
the higher mind, the awareness is, is something that sort of zooms out a little bit. It's, it's this kind of a feeling like an observer. So realize that you have the higher mind, the spiritual mind that's observing things. And then your ego mind that sometimes, you know, gets in the way of things. So realize that, but definitely enjoy, enjoy whatever season you're in, whatever environment you're in and whatever whatever the rhythms and the flows and the smells and the sights and the sounds of your environment and that's what that's all you gotta do today isn't that nice <laughs> not much to do like you can do if you want you can be physical if you want but the spirit's saying you can manifest as much as as you want by just being just be and you can you can do a whole lot more than you realize just by being by visualizing it and sometimes you have you noticed that when you do it's almost like you're like going uphill or you fight beating up against obstacles some days the doing just seems like i keep doing and doing and doing and nothing's working it's because your higher mind is not behind the doing so let go of some of the doing and get into more of the being and then if you while you shift that balance then you can see things manifest a little bit better all right. <laughs> okay. So I hope you like that. Faith, trust, and pixie dust. Mm -hmm.